Hi everyone, Mary Meet. If you don't know me, I'm Anna. I'm a clinical psychology doctoral intern, and today we're going to talk about winter depression and specifically three strategies that can be a little bit counterintuitive for how to deal with seasonal depression in the colder, darker months. I do have an older video on this, you know, scientifically proven strategies to prevent and manage seasonal depression. Check that out if you're interested. I also have a, a happy lamb featured in that video if you are looking for a particular brand. But if you're already doing everything that you need to be doing, you know, taking vitamin D, using a happy lamb for 20 minutes every morning, you're still feeling down this time of year, this could be the video for you. This video is just to kind of normalize what you're feeling and instead of actually giving you tools to fix it, giving you some mental tools to lean into it in a way that makes the suffering actually more manageable. We as humans are obsessed with sunshine and rainbows and warmth and glitter and ponies and all things bright. We flee to tropical locations at the first hint of a chill in the air. We freak out when it starts to get dark out earlier. We mourn summer. We mourn the life that summer brought us. For a lot of people, it's really difficult to manage the cold, dark months. As a society, I think we overvalue happiness to the point where we forget that there is also meaning in the more painful emotions. If you're not new here, then you know my stance. Every emotion serves a function. Every emotion has something that it is adaptive for. There is no bad emotion to have. But in our society, we overvalue happiness to such an extent that anything slightly painful or uncomfortable becomes bad in our heads. And also, if you've seen my videos on Jungian shadow work, you understand there is no light that doesn't also have a shadow. If you love the light, the summer, the warmth, the heat, there's going to be its polar opposite that creates the totality of the experience. You cannot have just summer year long because then it wouldn't be summer. It would just become your baseline and you would have no darkness to contrast it with. The only way to remove a shadow is to live in the dark, meaning you cannot truly experience joy if you don't also sometimes experience pain to put it into perspective. So I think a lot of seasonal depression can just be attributed to plain old resistance of reality, resistance to the idea that you have to accept sometimes there's a darker, colder aspect of life and that's just the way things are. And, and without that, there wouldn't be a happy part of it. The opposite of radical acceptance in DBT or what's called willingness and act, the opposite of acceptance, resistance to what you know is outside of your control and yet you still cannot accept. A lot of people resist the cold, the dreary, the bleak, the dark. We crave constant happiness and sunshine. We feel wronged when winter comes along. Society also resists the reality of winter by keeping up the same expectations of productivity that we had during the summer. Whereas many animals are in hibernation this time of year or just trying to conserve their energy or just trying to find a solid shelter for them to be in during these difficult months, we as humans continue to work ourselves dry. We simply don't have the same amount of energy in the winter as we do in the summer because evolutionarily we're not built for that and yet we still try to resist this reality and we try to push ourselves past our biological limits. And when we don't have that energy and the same expectations of productivity are placed on us, that's when we get things like burnout and seasonal depression. So what if instead of resisting winter and the depression that comes with it, what if we were to lean into it instead? The way I see it, there are sort of three ways to lean into it. One way is to romanticize it, to basically balance out the darkness of winter by making it very merry and bright inside your home, inside your shelter. Another way to experience it is to mindfully embrace the experience and to tolerate the pain and the distress that comes up. And the third way of dealing with it is leaning into the darkness, not just tolerating it, but actually fully embracing it by doing something like shadow work, exploring the darker sides of your own humanity. Starting with the first suggestion, the idea of romanticizing winter. Winter can be a time of great contrast. You know, in the summer, you have a bright, sunny outdoors and people are very consistent with it. It's very low contrast. They're out partying, sipping margaritas on patios, going on boat rides and just having a great time. In winter, it can be high contrast because outside, very cold, bleak, gray. Inside, very bright decor 
trees, baking warm things, building a fire in the hearth, making warm drinks, hot chocolate, spiked cider, eggnog. Outside, the nighttime is dragging its sharpened talons across the lawn. The trees are skeletal, a cold rain rattles at your window pane. Everything seems as if it's in black and white. How can you make it so that on the inside, it is the complete opposite of that? It is warm, colorful, festive, bright. You can do this using all five of the senses. You can decorate your home for winter using evergreenery, oven roasted orange slices, pine cones, bright tablecloths, fuzzy blankets. You can bake a pie in the oven, make a cup of hot cocoa with marshmallows and peppermint schnapps and whipped cream on top, just smelling in the aromas. You can get under the blankets, light a fire in the hearth if you have one, put on some holiday movies, or just blast a playlist of relaxing winter carols. It's not about resisting winter, it's about leaning into it and leaning into what can actually be really beautiful about it. Now, I'm not trying to imply that this is going to cure your seasonal depression, of course not, but I think a key component of depression is that you get really caught up in how negative everything is and in the winter, it's a lot of things that you can catch on to, a lot of things feeling dark and heavy and cold and gray inside. So what would it be like to do the complete opposite of that? Bring in some of that contrast to balance you out. This is what in DBT we call opposite action, when an emotion either doesn't fit the facts of the situation or isn't adaptive to act upon, if you want to change that emotion, you do the complete opposite. For instance, you feel sad, you force yourself to smile, and then you end up somewhere in the middle. But romanticizing winter, I think, is also a way of honoring it. Even the bleak months, even the depression, even the sadness, even the coldness, it serves a function, it's there for a reason, and it can be beautiful. We talked about this in the video on the psychology of Halloween, but there is a reason why we celebrate things like death, for instance, because we need to honor every aspect of the life cycle. And similarly, I think we need to do this for the annual cycle. Now, strategy number two is to mindfully experience the pain of winter, to sort of lean into the hibernation, the rest, even the sadness in the morning of it. Let yourself experience winter and its depression without any resistance whatsoever. Notice the different sensations coming up in your body. Notice the emotion of depression. Notice the thoughts coming up for you. Practice non-attachment. Breathe spaciousness into them. Notice how transient they are. And be gentle with yourself. Allow yourself more comfort days than you used to. Take time off if you can afford to. Let yourself withdraw into repose. Regain your energy for the coming of spring. In my personal opinion, depression is one of the least adaptive disorders. It doesn't really have a lot of adaptiveness to our modern day lives. But in the past, like I said, it definitely did. There was a reason why we needed to conserve our energy and just hang in tight during those winter months because otherwise, what could you do? You go outside, you can't find food, now you're cold, you've expended energy, and now you're more likely to not survive the winter. We are not that different from the bears and the squirrels who do things differently this time of year. We need to stop forcing ourselves to an impossible standard year round and instead think about what are some ways we can be more gentle with ourselves and let us experience this period of low repose for what it's meant to be. And the third tip, which is my favorite for how to deal with winter depression, is lean into shadow work. If you don't know, shadow work is basically uncovering and integrating the shadow self, a concept by Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist from the 20th century. The shadow self is the part of you that was basically rejected during childhood and sometimes adulthood as well. It's a personification of all these traits that you strive not to be. So it's the darkest time of the year, why not dive into the darkest part of yourself, your shadow self? There is a time and place to explore the dark, and I think around the winter solstice is the perfect time to do this. Night as long as the day is shortest, why not also explore your shadow more closely? I do want to say I've been seeing a lot of content online about shadow work being just plain journaling and prompts like, tell me about a, an unpleasant memory you had. That's not shadow work. Shadow work is not just journaling or thinking back on your childhood or getting insight into yourself. Shadow work is specifically aimed at uncovering the side of you that you strive to not be. The part of you that has gotten rejected by yourself, by other people, the part of you that you fear you may become. 
because if you can't look it in the face, then you can't properly integrate it. And of course, every now and then we all slip up. You know, let's say that your shadow self is someone who is low compassion because you strive to be compassionate in your everyday life. When a moment comes around and you're not going to be able to be compassionate, you don't want to be caught off guard and judge yourself so harshly. You want to have said, yeah, I've met my shadow self. I know there's a part of my shadow that is not compassionate and I can look that in the face and still acknowledge that I'm a human being who deserves compassion. So some prompts for getting at shadow work during the season include what are your biggest pet peeves about other people? What do you hate about other people that you try to avoid doing yourself? What are some times that you were disproportionately triggered by something? The reason these questions are aimed at shadow work is because it's trying to uncover what are some things that you can identify you don't like about other people and therefore you can uncover these are the things that tend to trigger me most because they're things I very much don't want to be myself or maybe I judge about myself when I do do them. And there are questions like, tell me about a memory you had where you felt rejected, one where you felt embarrassed, one when you felt ashamed, one when you felt punished. What do you most hate about yourself? What do you most fear about yourself? What parts of yourself do you try to hide? So these again are aimed at trying to uncovering the parts of you that got rejected and became personified into this shadow. So just three simple ways to not cure winter depression, but actually lean into it a little bit. First of all, romanticize it, implement that contrast. Second of all, embrace it fully, be more gentle with yourself, let yourself lean into the repose. And third of all, lean into winter further by leaning into your own shadow side and uncovering what's in the dark and cold there. As always, if you are struggling with winter depression, this is not meant to substitute therapy, so I do hope you're able to find services if you need them. And I hope you have a happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, and that this video is able to help some. Let me know in the comments what video you want to see next. Bye!